they are just built in a way that they can refine only one class of crude. He said when Nigeria has about 32 crude, so there's need to re reconfigure the refineries and give room for refining more crude types. Now the next nominee for the screening is coming in to the chamber, he's already inside the chamber. Coming in closely to, to bow before the chair, he is the nominee from Jigawa State, Suleiman Hassan Adamu, the immediate past Minister of Water Resources. Suleiman Adamu was born on the 19th of April, 1963. He is a civil engineer and a project management consultant. He has a, he has a Bachelor of Science in Engineering from the Madubela University, Zaria, in 1984. He has a Master's degree in Project Management the, the from the University of Reading, United Kingdom in 2004. Engineer Suleiman Hassan Adamu is on the podium ready to defend his ministerial nominee. From Jugawa State. Hello, Minister, on behalf of my colleagues, you are welcome to the Senate chamber and we have all been given your CV and we have all gone through the CV. You have an opportunity to emphasize those things in the CV that you need the Senate to take note of. And if there is anything that is omitted but is of consequence and significance, you can speak to it. Once again, you are welcome to this screening exercise and you can address the Senate. But before then, let me welcome uh, members of the House of Representatives and other members of your delegation who have accompanied you here. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency, the Senate President, uh, distinguished presiding officers of the Senate, the majority on the minority side, uh, let me also acknowledge my own senators from Jigar State, Senator Daladi Sankara, Senator Ibrahim Hassan Hadija, and Senator Sabono Kudu. In addition, I would also like to acknowledge some of my good friends in the Senate, particularly Senator Abu Kari, my childhood friend, Senator Kabir Gail, my senior uncle, brother, and a host of others. Uh, let me also seize this opportunity, Mr. President, to thank all those that have uh, joined me here in this uh, hello chamber, starting with my wife, Hawa, and my members of my family, my colleagues, my cousins, uh, members of the House of Representatives from, the Jiga, from Jiga State, led by the chairman of AMP, uh, APC in Jiga. Uh, Chairman uh, DG Voice of Nigeria, Osito Okechiku, and a host of others. Forgive me for not mentioning this. Mr. President, sir, uh, I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity. Three and a half years ago, I was here on this kind of uh, uh, screening, and I would like to express my profound appreciation to His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari for giving me yet another opportunity to be of service to my country. I believe, given this opportunity, I will put in my best again, as I think I have done in the last three and a half years, uh, to the service of my fatherland. You have your CV before me. I don't want to go too much into it. Suffice to say that uh, I was born in Kaduna, uh, although I'm a citizen of Jigawa State, born to a public family of public servants, my father being a 
civil servant in the then Northern Regional Government of Nigeria. Before the creation of States War, we moved to Kano, where I started my primary school and ended up in Kaduna, first at Mogwen Local Education Authority Primary School in Kano, and later at Capital School Kaduna. Thereafter, I went to uh, Federal Government College Kano, a place I'm very proud to mention because the motto of that school, as you all know, is a unity school, was pro unitat And uh, I am a citizen of Nigeria by virtue of the fact that I grew up with people from all parts of Nigeria. Uh, and I can say without fear of contradiction today that there is no state in th of the Federation that I do not have friends and people that I call brothers and sisters. In fact, I am the president of the alumni association of that school, and by virtue of that fact, also a very active member of uh, Unity Schools All Students Association. My working life, I started in public service, first with Federal Capital Development Authority in 1985, and then I moved back to Kano, State Civil Service, and uh, uh, working with Water Resources and Engineering Construction Agency. In 1990, I received my professional practice license from Corin, which encouraged me in 1992 to move out of public service to start a practice along with my friends, uh, where we set up a consulting firm that has been in existence to date. Uh, we did quite a number of projects, including supporting the well-known Petroleum Special Trust Fund program uh, between 1995 and 1999 where I was a principal consultant responsible for planning and design and coordination of many infrastructure projects, especially in the water sector. Professionally, I have, uh, I would say I'm fulfilled, having been made a fellow of the Nigeria Society of Engineers at the age of 36 in 1999, and uh, barely a month ago, I was privileged to be invited by my peers to be conferred with the highest professional honor to engineers in this country where I was inducted into the Academy of Engineering as a fellow. Politically, I've been very active since 2002 in the Buhari organization. I've headed directorates of research, strategy, logistics, and so on over the three campaigns or four campaigns that we had between 2003 and 2011. In 2010, I was elected National Vice Chairman of the Congress for Progressive Change, CPC, representing the Northwest. I've also served as Special Assistant to the President in the 2007 campaigns, uh, among other activities. But what is of import, I think, here is the fact that I was the immediate past uh, Minister of the Federal Ministry of Water uh, water resources, <coughs> where I conducted the affairs of that ministry in the last uh, three years, three and a half years. Uh, so I'll just crave your indulgence, Mr. President, to speak a little about some of the uh, work that we did there, uh, whereby we started with a roadmap, we developed a roadmap for the sector, I think probably for the first time, uh, a 15 year roadmap. Uh, that will lead to greater improvement of the water resources sector. We went to, we met a sector that was in serious crisis. Uh, we started with our roadmap. The roadmap included issues that had to do with policy. So we started with policy issues. Policy we started with the issue of as well as the national water national water resources bill, uh, which was successfully passed by the House of Representatives, but has been pending before this uh, important. Uh, chamber, and which I hope that the Ninth Senate will give adequate consideration to ensure that it is passed, because it is very, very critical to the rejuvenation and revitalization of the water resources sector in this country. The roadmap also comprised a program for water supply, sanitation, and hygiene that would see to Nigeria achieving the sustainable development goals uh, by the year 2030. Of course, the Minister of Water Resources is responsible for SDG 6.1 and 6.2, uh, water and sanitation. And 
Nigeria didn't meet the Millennium Development Goals, so we had to bring up a new strategy to ensure that we achieve the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. Accordingly, we, we initiated a new program, which we call Partnership uh, for Expanded Water Supply, Sanitation and Hygiene, which has started working. While we are, the program is ongoing, we are working first with two states, but we have 12, 22 states that have subscribed to it. The idea is to have a, a, a collaboration, strong collaboration between the federal government and the state government to ensure that the SDG targets 6.1 and 6.2 are achieved. Along the way, we also developed a new roadmap for making Nigeria open defecation free by 2025. We developed a new WASH action plan in collaboration with development partners which led to President Mohamed Buhari declaring a state of emergency on the water supply and sanitation sector in November last year. And before I left office, we were already working on a new launch of a new drive following the Indian example to make sure Nigeria is open defecation free by 2025. Uh, I would like to say that before I came on board, uh, from several communities were open to vacation free, but for the first time in 2017, we were able to get one local government open to vacation free. And before I left office, we have had 10 local governments in this country that are open to vacation free. And now, with the, uh, with the state of emergency being declared, we are seeing states coming up and competing among themselves to ensure that Nigeria is ODF by the year 2025, which is a healthy... Uh, uh, development. On transnational development, uh, transboundary waters, uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Uh, President, <clears throat> we have ch continued to champion the need to revitalize the Lake Chad. Mr. President has been vocal and uh, has helped tremendously in bringing the issue of Lake Chad on the roadmap. Uh, you probably recall, some of you, that uh, we had a very successful conference in February 2018 on revitalization of the Lake Chad, and now we're getting a lot of interest the world over on uh, the way forward. Uh, we've also been very active in our activities, the Niger Basin Authority and the Lake Chad Basin Commission. And uh, since uh, I was in office, Mr. President has been the chairman of the Summit of Heads of State, and I've been the chairman of the, National, of the Council of Ministers, and I've been steering the affairs of those two organizations. Uh, still on transboundary waters, we have also been able to revitalize the Kamadugu Yobe, Hadeja Kamadugu Yobe Trust Fund, and uh, we are now working assiduously to ensure that uh, we, have been able, we are able to read uh, or to, to, to open the, 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 the basin uh, to allow for free flow of water, as we know there is a huge environmental challenge in that area. Uh, we have been able to revitalize our river basin development authorities uh, to support irrigation and support the, this administration's uh, new policy on agriculture. Uh, now, river basin development authorities are very proactive and they are being properly supervised uh, by the ministry. Uh, in this context, we have been able to develop what we call the Songhai model. We have had a graduate and youth empowerment program that is supporting 50 youths at a time and it's now matched with the Songhai uh, program on uh, sustainable agricultural practice. And we hope uh, on that program, as we move on, and uh, with the support for, uh, uh, given by relevant appropriations, that all the 109 senatorial districts in this country will have at least one Songhai model farm in the near future. Uh, we have deliberately avoided doing new projects, uh, Mr. President, because we inherited 116 ongoing and abandoned projects. Some of them started since 1992 and never completed. Some for 17 years, not done. So what we did, we decided to prioritize those projects. We abandoned those that we thought were not viable, and we took the most serious projects and have been pursuing them. I'm happy to say that in the three and a half years, we were able to complete about uh, uh, 17 of these projects. We commissioned 12. And between this year, 2019, and 2020, we hope to, commission another 19, to complete another 19. We deliberately did that because investment has been put in those projects. And I recall at my last uh, Senate confirmation hearing, I did make the point that if I was a minister, I would place priority on 
the projects that we inherited. Government is a continuum, and we must continue to do that. Otherwise, we'll have fragmentation of so many projects, and nothing is completed, and uh, we'll not give value for money. So uh, these are some of the things that we have done uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the ministry during my three and a half years stewardship. Uh, and I would like to say that also we have re revitalized, we have, we have encouraged, we have now developed a very good relationship with development partners, UNICEF, the World Bank, African Development Bank, and so on. And uh, we hope that uh, this will continue into the future. I thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Sungu Senator Ike Okonomari, the former Deputy President of the Senate. Thank you, Mr. President. Very distinguished colleagues. Let me commend the nominee and say that I can confirm as a man a high sense of duty and responsibility. I have just a few questions for you. One, in your last comments, you did say you inherited a number of projects. But I would like to be more specific with regard to dams. Since I came to this Senate in 2003, year in, year out, we budget money for several dams across the country. There are some of them that keep recurring every appropriation bill. And up to today, most of them have not been completed. Do you have any plan on how to complete all these dams so that we can exit from this project? Because for me, it appears to be one way of uh, draining the, nat the, uh, the national resources. So they need to be completed. Do you have any plan to complete these dams? Secondly, our people are also concerned about portable water. Yes, this dam may deliver this water in some places, but they are not evenly distributed. Now, are you, will you be minded to look at a process that can provide water evenly across this country? And I'll give you an example. In my central district, we tried a number of times to provide uh, borehole through appropriation. And we discovered how limited that approach could be. So what we did was to procure a drilling machine. And over time, in the last 12 months, we provided about over 20 boreholes for our people. Can you support a process where your ministry will provide daily machine to each state of this federation through your own offices in those various states to help intervene in those communities where you cannot have this dam so that our people can have the benefit of a portable water? And finally, you are aware that South is the only geopolitical zone with one super basin authority. Can you, in the words of the Deputy Senate President, commit yourself? To giving the Southeast an additional river basin. DSP, you, you know my response to him. <laughs> the Sungu Senator Kashim Shetima. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, distinguished colleague. When the nominee was appointed the Minister of Water Resources in 2015, it was tantamount to putting a square peg in a square hole because water is its area of core competence. I want us to revisit the issue of the lectures that is responsible for the sustenance of 30 million livelihoods in that region. And there is an incestuous relationship between economy and ecology. And with the shrinking of the lectures, from 25,000 square kilometers to less than 2,500 square kilometers. It had a direct correlation with the instability and the violence in the region. Can you give us a specific roadmap on how the Lake Chad is going to be recharged from River Obangi in the Congo Republic? Thank you so much. Senator Benjamin Wajimogu. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Senator Ben Wajimogu. I represent the good people and some bad people of Imo <laughs> State. I want to uh, say that uh, I want to commend the nominee, the former uh, Water Resources Minister, 
Um, I think he has done well. He did well as a, as a minister of water resources. I visited some of the projects that he had under his ministry. As a matter of fact, there's one of his projects ongoing in my Senatorial uh, uh, District. Uh, I just want to get a commitment that if he returns <laughs> to, uh, the uh, to the ministry, that he will continue yeah. that project. Because my, my, my community gave him a, a title of Inyo Awan, mm. of uh, Okigwe. Mm. And uh, I want to use that opportunity to thank him to that, let him know that my community is rooting for him and to urge our colleagues to please confirm him and allow him to uh, bow and go. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Senator Bima Mohamed Enagi. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, my colleagues. My name is uh, Bima Mohamed Enagi. I'm from Niger State, Niger South. Mr. Nominee, Engineer Suleiman Adamu, I would like to congratulate you. From your CV, I can see that you have been in the construction industry for the past 34 years. You, you had worked in consultancy, you had also worked in contracting, and also in the public service. So you have seen it all. My que I have two questions. The first question is in respect of the Public Procurement Act. You recollect that prior to 2007, most of our procurement process in the construction industry was guided by the JCT, the ICE, the FIDIC, and guidelines provided by Tenders Board of Bureaus Parastasis. However, in 2007, the Act was promulgated and signed by Mr. President then, and it became operational since that time. With the core objectives, of one, competition, two, transparency, and three, accountability. My question now, to what extent do you think these objectives have been achieved? And what areas of the Act do you think will require amendment for enhanced benefits to the public? The second question is about the advance payments. I'm sure for anybody who has been in the, construction, in the construction industry for some time now knows the effects of advance payments. The core objectives of giving advance payments are not being realized in Nigeria. We have abundant projects everywhere. We have projects that are scheduled for about two years, not getting completed until after about 10 years. We have cases of the final completion costs being 100%, 200%, 300% above the initial contract sum. And you know fully well that advance payments are being given basically to work against these, these issues. Now my question is, what new modalities would you suggest for the administration of advance payments? Thank you, Mr. President. The last in this batch will be the Deputy Minority Whip, Senator Sahabi Alijiao. Thank you, Mr. President. Like you mentioned, my name is Senator Sahabi Alhaji from Zampara North Senatorial District. Uh, Mr. Nomini, I would want to welcome you to this uh, screening and confirmation exercise. One can conveniently say you have done well in your last assignment. However, there are policies and programs that were supposed to be good to the health and the economic growth of this nation. But unfortunately, most of these programs are left to die as soon as they are launched. One of them has to do with the national policy against open duplication. One other is the national policy 
on water preservation policy and strategy. Mr. Nomini, as good as these policies look, I think the ministry has not done justice to them. Now you are here facing this hollow chamber in the process to screen and confirm it. Can we share with you why the implementation of these laudable programs becomes difficult? Should you be finally confirmed and then appointed by Mr. President back to your Ministry of Water Resources, what will you do to move from the past? Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Minority Whip. You can respond to the questions. Thank you very much, uh, Excellency, Mr. Senate President. Let me start with the uh, question from uh, Senator Okeremadu. Plan on completion of dams. Uh, if you recall in my statement, I did mention that uh, we met 116 ongoing and abandoned projects. 37 or so of those projects are dam projects. Uh, dams cost a lot of money, uh, but the main issue, I will tell you, say, Mr. Distinguished Senator, is that many of these projects were hurriedly implemented without proper designs, without going through the full project cycle of projects. Once a project was initiated, uh, you, everybody was just rushing to go to a construction site. If before building a dam, you need to survey, you need to do hydrological studies, you need to do geotechnical investigations, and so on. But uh, most of the ongoing projects that I inherited, that I met in that ministry, contractors went to site sometimes without even knowing the site. And once they picked a site, they would discover that there are so many problems because the necessary investigations were not conducted ab initio to, 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 to properly plan and assess and quantify what the work should be. And therefore, we found that uh, after some time, contractors would abandon the project or sometimes if there is no payment coming, uh, they just, they just they don't let it go. And we end up having so many revised estimated total costs of projects over time in order to be able to complete them. This is what we faced. Uh, but like I said, we have prioritized our projects. Uh, unfortunately, some of the dams that we even discovered, we, we are just going to complete them now out of safety consideration because we can't just leave, it, leave the place like that. We, but we, not because the dams are viable in any case. Uh, so that is it. But what we'll try to do, or what we've been trying to do is to prioritize. And we're working. We've uh, been able to finish Kashimbila. We've been able to, to finish uh, Galma, uh, Ogashuku, and, and quite a number of them. Uh, and hopefully, uh, dams are not just built just like that. They are built for a purpose. So we also hope that if the dam is meant for water supply, maybe the responsible state will take up the, the mantle quickly and put those dams to use. Uh, some of the projects we have, we even had a situation where contractors finished the work and for years, for 10 years, the projects were not taken over. Uh, I really don't know. I think basically it's also been not only lack of funding, but lack of professionalism. And honestly, the fact that I think uh, the public service is deficient of skills in contract administration today. And uh, for that reason, I made it mandatory in the Federal Ministry of Water Resources that from now on, I think for the past two years, every officer, including those that are not technical, must attend a project management course, basic project management course, so that at least, and then we can build up on that. Uh, on portable water supply, as you know, I always like to remind people that uh, it's on the concurrent list and the primary responsibility for provision of portable water supply rests with state governments. Uh, whatever the federal government can do is just an intervention. 
and federal government has been spending a lot of money building the necessary infrastructure, dams, in some cases even water treatment facilities, only for the states to do their bit of doing the distribution network to ensure that water gets de delivered to the people, including the metering and so on, they won't do it. There is a project that is seven, eight years old now. It's a complete dam and a package treatment plant, and is yet the, the people that are supposed to be benefiting from it are not benefiting because the state government responsible is not investing money. So we need state governments to invest more money. The other aspect, of course, is whether we like it or not, we must find a way to do some element of privatization of water. Water is an economic commodity that must be paid for. Although, yes, it's a human right issue, there, there is a, it has been declared that water is, a, is, is the, the fundamental right of every citizen, every human being to, to get water, but the cost of providing that water is, 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 is significant and people should be able to pay for it. And going forward, again, I will hope that this distinguished uh, house will revisit the water resources bill because there in that bill there is a provision to in, attract foreign investment, uh, foreign investors to come and invest in the water sector, at least in the, in the water supply sector. And this we cannot run away from. If we must, if we must be self-sufficient in water supply in this country, state government must invest as and when necessary. We must be ready to accept long-term plans. You cannot have a water scheme if a in a municipal area finished in one year or two years. It's a generational thing. You start and then another government will come and continue and continue and continue. But if we're thinking about the next election, then we'll always be looking for quick fixes and will not be able to do what is required. A typical municipal water supply uh, scheme will require a 15-year projection. You are supposed to plan for the first 15 years and then another 50 years. So you need to be working 30 years around the clock to be able to even get the first one that you initiated. So we must do that. Uh, I honestly don't support... I, 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 I believe... We, it's inevitable because of geology and hydrology. Certain areas, we must go for boreholes. We cannot, because it's not everywhere you have surface water. But I think the proliferation of boreholes in this country is getting out of hand. And uh, for rural communities, yes. Uh, but in rural areas where we have streams and rivers, why should we still continue to do boreholes? State government should invest in many treatment schemes so that the water can be distributed. So uh, I, would not like, I don't like the idea of federal government buying drilling rigs and giving them to the states, honestly. Uh, with due respect, uh, distinguished senator, I, I'm not a friend of boreholes unless it is absolutely necessary. I would prefer modern municipal water supply schemes where everybody will open the tap in his house, the water is taken directly to his house for him to take it, even in small towns and rural communities. Um, Regarding the River Basin Development Authorities, uh, distinguished uh, uh, Senator, with due respect, again, River Basin Development Authorities were not created out of political boundaries. They were created based on hydrological boundaries. And the uh, Anambra Imo Basin is one. I hydrologically have looked at it. It's, it's so difficult or even impossible for you to split that basin because it is one basin. And that is the whole essence behind the, uh, you know, uh, establishment of this river basin. It is not a political issue. It's not based on states. It's not based on local government. It's simply based on the hydrology of the area. So, uh, but I'm open to any, any suggestions. If there is a superior argument, I'm ready to listen. Uh, distinguished Senator uh, Shatima, uh, the issue of Lake Chad, we have done so much in terms of public awareness. There is so much to do. The issue of Lake Chad is not a one-year, five-year, ten-year program. It's also a generational issue. This is a project that, if started, can take 20, 30 years before it can be completed. The planning alone will require five, maybe seven, ten years to do. What we have achieved so far is to create awareness. Secondly, to, to achieve an international consensus that there is a need to revitalize the lake. Having done so at the conference, we are now moving to the next phase of trying to update the feasibility study that was done 
in 2002, which Nigeria supported with a $5 million facility. Uh, we have also received a grant of 1.5 million euro from the Italian government to support that action. But this project program is not being driven by the Federal Ministry of Water Resources. It's a transboundary issue, so it's being driven by the Lake Chad Basin Commission, uh, which is an uh, organization of five member countries. So their consensus is required, and the consensus of the uh, brothers in the Congo Basin is also required uh, to be able to to, for them to allow us to tap the water. And I think that consensus has also been built up. There are quite a few uh, non-governmental organizations that have had murmurs uh, trying to object, but I think once they see the technical feasibility study and the environmental impact assessment of this project, then that will be done. So it's a long process. We're still on it. And uh, I believe, even though I've left, the Child Basin Commission is still working on it. The consultants are there. Uh, we are waiting for the Italian government to release the 1.5 million euro to help them coordinate and continue so that they finish first the feasibility study. After the feasibility study, the feasibility study will bring out a number of options. Then we have to decide which is the best option. And that option will further be developed into a detailed engineering design before we now begin to talk of procurement. So, uh, but I'm hopeful that... Uh, Something will happen in the long run, but like I said, this is a generational project that will take a long time, but I think we have taken the right steps uh, and, uh, uh, so far, and we are, we are, we are working. So, so. Okay. Um. Let me, excuse me, let me invite um, Senator Sabo Mohamed Nakudu, Senator Daladi Sankara, Abraham Hassan, okay, he's here. Senator Ibrahim Hassan Hadeja, in that order. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. Uh, actually, I wanted to, to speak first uh, before my colleagues contribute. I wanted to showcase our pride uh, from Jigawa, and uh, I wanted to urge all my colleagues to ask him any questions that, that you want to ask him. Uh, it's uh, up to the task. And uh, from what answers he has given so far, he has answered uh, most of the questions satisfactorily. But uh, if it is in the mood of the Senate yeah. that he takes a bow and go, yeah. I will miss yeah. uh, further uh, enlightenment, as you can see. So I will recommend, or rather I will allow my colleague to move for him to take a bow and go, and my other colleague can second. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Senator Adela de Sankara, Adela too. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. My name is Senator Adela de Adela de Sankara, representing the Gawa Northwest. It's happened that, you know, the nominee is from my constituency. And uh, it's the people that, you know, we are always saying tested and trusted. Because he was here, I can remember 2015, and repeated now this year. In fact, what he's talking about is CV indicated everything here. And I can witness it because I was once a chairman of one of the river basins, which is Hali de Jamaare River Basin Development Authority. And what I want, you know, my colleagues to understand, river basin has about 
12 river basins, apart from uh, some agencies, like about four agencies. When you add it together, it's about 16. And his CV is indicating everything here. He touched everywhere, meaning he walked all over the country. So I guarantee, you know, the nominee, he performed very well. He is a gentleman, man of integrity. So I urge my colleague to allow him to bow. Senator Ibrahim Hassan Hadeja. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. President, there's very little to left to add. So my colleagues are up to it. I can assure you that uh, our nominee can answer questions in the middle of next week. <laughs> but uh, uh, I think it's a consensus of the Senate that uh, what we have here is uh, a round nominee in a round hole. And uh, I just want to uh, also highlight on uh, some of the issues you raised, especially when it comes to uh, uh, completing abandoned projects. At the state level, we learned a lot from him uh, as a minister, which is to say, uh, take what you have uh, met, prioritize it, and then finish the projects that have the greatest impact on people. And I think that's what he did. And especially what he did in respect to river building uh, development authorities. So, President, uh, before the advent of uh, uh, this uh, fine gentleman, our river basins were essentially used as conduits for all, all sorts of things. Everything, everything but providing water for drinking and irrigation. But uh, I'll give you an example of the Hadid Jamari River Basin uh, project, which incidentally impacts uh, Yobe State as well as Bochi. Uh, in almost uh, 35 or 40 years, uh, we've been at about 25% completion for that project. And uh, just within the last four years, we're seeing work that will probably add another 1,000 hectares of uh, irrigable land. So uh, that, and lastly, also to commend on the fact that in the last four years, we saw greater interaction between the Ministry of Water Resources and the Ministry of Agriculture. So much so that uh, a lot of the success of the go back to uh, the land uh, 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 program of this administration that's been attributed to agriculture actually has a lot to do with what was being done uh, in terms of uh, irrigation at the Ministry of Water Resources. So, Mr. President, I think uh, we shouldn't waste this gentleman's time any further. We should allow him to go and start making preparations for his swearing in, and hopefully, being a minister of water resources, also prepare for worship of this nomination because he didn't wash the last one, and I've been mandated to say that uh, we're going to roll over that nomination and combine it with this. So he has a lot to do. So, President. I move that uh, this gentleman be allowed to take a bow and go. Thank you. Thank you very much, distinguished uh, colleagues. You know, once the representatives of the state speak, I just round it up, so there is no point for anybody to raise his hand. But let, let me uh, let me say that we during his presentation, and this is not a question, it's just a comment. He mentioned the Water Resources Bill. Uh, actually, the Water Resources Bill was done, unfortunately, controversially by <laughs> a senator, and now he's on the side of government. And uh, I'll just advise the Honourable Minister that you know what happened, because I sponsored the bill on behalf of the federal government. And I think at that time, out of maybe simple opposition, someone created a story around the bill, and then the bill was opposed. We tried to manage uh, the situation. It couldn't. Now, that person is going to work for this bill to be passed. So you work with him, since he'll be in the cabinet with you, 
uh, I believe that we need water bill to be passed for this country to, to have a better manage uh, water resources environment. Thank you very much. Is it the wish of the Senate that he takes about? Yes. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. You can take about. And taking the bow as he walks out of the Red Chambers is the former Minister of Water Resources, Mr. Adamu Suleiman, the nominee from Jigawa State. A lot of things he said uh, he accomplished within his, during his time as Minister of Water Resources, one of them uh, being the ending of open defecation by 2025, said so they have a program already rolling to ensure uh, that this is done. Uh, talked about the problem of abandoned projects, uh, which is one of the major issues with water resources, especially dam projects. And he broke it down, 116 abandoned projects at the time when he came into office, inherited those. Uh, 17 have been commissioned, 12, uh, 17 have been completed rather, and he said 12 have been commissioned. And he said of all those abandoned projects, 116 of them, 37 were dam projects, according to him. And when he was asked, you know, why they have so many uh, projects that have not been completed. He talked about the fact that many projects were initiated and hurriedly designed without the necessary background analysis. And when problems come up, they would have to abandon those projects. Sometimes funding will stop. And he was basically talking about how he was going to do uh, the, differently uh, in the next years if he is, comes back as Minister of Water Resources. Also talks about the proliferation of boreholes in the country and how this could be a problem and something that they are looking at doing uh, the most that they can in the ministry to stop the proliferation of boreholes uh, across the country. The former Minister of Water Resources, Mr. Adamu uh, Suleiman from Jigawa State, making his way out of the Red Chambers, and we'll be looking forward to who else uh, will be uh, screened here by the Senators of the Ninth Senate. As we said earlier, this is the Cabinet, ladies and gentlemen. This is the cabinet that will be manning the affairs of the country for the next four years. And of course, a lot of uh, conversations around that particular fact. And, um, you know, looking forward to what these people will be bringing to the table in the next four years. And we'll be looking forward to talking to more nominees and hearing from more nominees. Uh, I, we're told that the next person uh, to be screened by the senators uh, is Prince Clement Kanade Agba, uh, who's a, a consummate professional, over 30 years of experience, uh, uh, 25 of which were in the oil and gas industry, eight years in between, spent on a leave of absence working for uh, the state government level as a commissioner. Uh, he's also uh, known to be a person with a commitment to driving cost reduction programs and business growth, uh, which is going to uh, impact the bottom line. That is what he is known for, Prince Clement Ikanade Agba, and I hear he will be uh, coming up shortly uh, with a very long resume and a lot of uh, experience, especially in the oil and gas sector. So we're looking forward to the questions that he will be asked and what answers he will be giving uh, to those questions as he makes his way into the Red Chambers. Uh, we hear he will be here shortly, so we'll be listening out for that one. The cabinet of President Muhammad Buhari taking shape, and we're looking at uh, the people who are going to constitute this cabinet. What kinds of people are they, and what kind of um, progress are they going to be bringing to the nation? Uh, the country uh, is one in need, in dire need of progress and looking at uh, technocrats and people who are able to turn things around. Uh, it is uh, four, years, uh, four years of the President Muhammadu Buhari administration. The remaining four years will be crucial uh, to uh, his legacy as President of Nigeria and what, uh, whatever this cabinet does will reflect directly on him. And so it is important that they are screened and Nigerians get to find out exactly who they are.